Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in crypto, and I'm bringing on a bite-sized piece. Today, there's really two things to talk about. First, we're going to talk about Solana, and the entire network went down for 12 hours. And second, we're going to talk about Bitcoin and what's happening as far as Golden Cross and what could potentially happen in quarter four. So we'll take a look at all those things, but first take a look at what's going on into the market. So today is a pretty great day. I mean, in all honesty, September is shaping up to be a pretty decent month thus far, thus far. Traditionally, uh, September hasn't been the greatest, but uh, so far, pretty good. So we're at uh, almost at 2.2 trillion. Bitcoin price is at 48,000, holding pretty strong. Uh, we've got some uh, minor fluctuations in prices, and we take a look here. We've got, uh, again, Bitcoin at 48,000, Ethereum 3,500, Cardano 252, and everything's up across the board in the last 24 hours, uh, for the most part. I mean, Polkadot's down a percent, but that's uh, nothing. So, uh, I mean, it's looking pretty good. 6% for FTX token, 30% for Tron. Watch out. That's crazy. 62% in, oh, that's seven days for uh, Cosmos or, or Atoms. That's pretty good. Anyhow, that's what's going on in the market. Let's just break into today's top story and just talk about this issue. And it may not be an issue. It may be something that's actually uh, quite bullish. It just depends on the way that you look at things. And uh, I leave it up for you to decide uh, if this is good news or bad news. So first up, the Solana mainnet beta encountered a large uh, increase in transaction load, which peaked at, get this, 400,000 TPS. That's 400,000 transactions per second. To put that into perspective, Visa, one of the uh, uh, global leaders in payment processing, does 1,700 transactions per second. So I'm not going to, so quick math, it's a lot. So, yeah, it's a ton, and uh, that is an amazing feat that it actually got up to that point. And during this time, these transactions flooded the transaction processing queue, and lack of prioritization of network critical messaging caused the network to start forking. And when you read that, you're like, geez, that sounds awful, but just wait. So this forking led to excessive memory consumption, causing some, some nodes, some, to go offline, Engineers across the ecosystem attempted to stabilize the network, but were unsuccessful. The validator community elected to coordinate a restart of the network. I'm going to say it again. The validator community elected to coordinate a restart of the network. Just, hey, let's just restart the whole thing. It's like, uh, you know, unplugging your modem, I guess. No, I'm just kidding. A little more complex than that. Uh, the community is preparing a new release and instructionally posted in Discord. So uh, this is what happened roughly 23... Uh, hours ago. This was on September 14th, uh, 1 p.m. They uh, actually uh, over 25 hours ago. And uh, this is the update right now. The Solana validator community successfully completed a restart of mainnet beta after an upgrade to 1.6.25. DApps, Block Explorers, and Spring Systems will recover over the next several hours, at which point full functionality will be restored. So that takes care of the first two parts. And I just wanna break this down because there's lots to unpack there. Uh, first of all, it's amazing that they had 400,000 transactions per second. I think we can all agree on that. That's pretty uh, stupendous. Uh, and, and people will say, well, you know, 400,000, I mean, that's when it actually went down. But I mean, think of it this way. Even if they hit 300,000, they were still stable. And then maybe they started to get a little turbulence at 350 and then 400,000 just wrecked the whole thing. That's amazing because that means, I mean, if you're testing something, that means it actually happened. And I actually wrote out, I'm like, was this potentially just a, an effort for them to, to test the network? And uh, they said, no, um, uh, there was some information that came out that said that, you know, it was just, everything was just kind of much, pretty much just caught in a loop. And it was like a, kind of like a DDoS attack on themselves, essentially. I know it's, it's a loose interpretation, but take it for what it is. And uh, so I'm like, well, that's great. I mean, look, that's pretty good. That is the bullish part. Now here is the not so great part. And that is that what they just talked about here, where they said, hey, look, uh, this forking, or sorry, the validator community elected to coordinate a restart of the network. I don't know, you know, how you want to look at that in any way, shape, or form, but when you can take a step back and your uh, validators can all get together and go, we'll just restart it. Let's just stop this. Let's just start this. Let's just move this around. Let's just do that around. Is that in actuality the decentralization part that you really want to? And I know people will debate that. It's not for me to tell you what it is. It's up, up for you to decide. Uh, but for me, it really comes down to this. It always talks about um, with Vitalik Buterin and the, and the trilemma. What is the issue that you're having? Well, uh, you can either have 
uh, security, uh, you can have speed, you can have scalability. So uh, if you want to uh, actually, or decentralization, if you want to have uh, scalability, uh, well, then you're going to have to centralize some things. If you want some sec more security, you have to make it a little bit more decentralized. And to solve all three parts of that trilemma takes a real hard amount of work. And Solana was one of the ones that said, we solved it. We did it. And uh, from here, just the outsider looking in, it doesn't seem like it's that decentralized. However, I will say this in a big way. However, I'm taking a look at the Solana website and we just kind of scroll down. Uh, everything looks like it is back up. Live transactions per second, 2023. Here's the average cost per transaction, a fraction of a penny. Here's the validator nodes. And we take a look at the validator nodes themselves, because if we want to say, well, is it really decentralized? Well, it all depends on the validators and how many are out there. You got 1,047. So, I mean, take it for what it is. That is a heck of a lot. That's a lot more than we say with EOS and their blockchain producers. I think it's like 21 or 24. I can never remember. So with over a thousand, hey, it's not like, you know, tens of thousands, but it's not two. So it is what it is. And that is the good part for there. Now, let's take a look at some other type of information and do like a little bit more of a deep dive as far as uh, token uh, allocation and staking. And this was, uh, this was a, an image that I've been circulating around and I was always kind of skeptical on and I wanted to really do a deep dive, but we take a look here, and I'll link this in. This is a, a tweet that I put out, so I'll, I'll link this in the description. You can look at it at, at depth. But you got, as far as like the initial token allocation for different projects, it breaks down a public sale community, which is the ecosystem funds or airdrops that will eventually go to the community. Insiders, which is that uh, like uh, pinkish uh, color, includes all team, company, and venture capitalists purchase tokens. Then in the gray is the foundations and more. Tokens allocated to foundations, community governed grant pools, or their incentives like testnet participation rewards. Those are good, right? Insiders, eh, not so much. Community allocations, that sounds good. And public sale, yeah, we like public sales, you know, not private sales. So if we take a look at Solana on the right hand side here, uh, this is what we got. 13% uh, is the, what is that? Uh, the foundation and more and then in this uh, like greenish type of thing that is the community allocation and not too bad and this very sl small sliver looks like uh the public sale and then the 48 percent which is what we're talking about venture capitalists um team and company is pretty much half of it so that doesn't look so great and when i had to try to prove this about you know is this really the truth Usually when you take a look at the at the white paper, it'll tell you like token allocation. I couldn't find much in there. Correct me in the comment section, that'd be great. And, uh, but I didn't really see this to be chalked up, but I will say this. If we take a little bit, bit of a, a deeper dive and we take a look at uh, the staking part, let's just say for the sake of argument, it was that, right? 50% went to venture capitalists and uh, teams and all those things. So if we take a look at staking, uh, first of all, Solana's initial inflation rate for staking is 8% annually. All right, a little bit high. Decreasing by 50% year over year until it reaches 1.5% annually. And then when I thought about it, I'm like, well, what about like lockup periods and unlock periods? So it states right here, by January 7th, 2021, it's already passed, the total unlock supply will be approximately 435,361,000 717 sold, excluding inflation rewards. Okay, so just remember this number, 435 million. That's all I gotta remember. If we take a look at the max supply, because we're like, well, is it a billion, 10 billion, 20 billion? Well, actually, the total supply and max supply is 488 million, 630,000, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so if we take a look over here, well, the unlock supply is pretty close to what it is. Now, the founders have, or the founders tokens will be unlocked. Uh, the amount of founders tokens currently expected to be unlocked on January 7th is 31 million. So you add those in together, great. The remaining half of the founders tokens will unlock monthly over the following 24 months or two years. So in all honesty, uh, as far as like unlocking, it uh, looks like the, the majority is unlocked. And the next question that I had uh, when I tweeted this out was this, well, if this is what it is, and we can assume this is right. Maybe it's a little, it's off. Maybe it's way off, a little bit off. I couldn't really find the information. But if we take a look at that, what about, what's more important, the initial token offering or how much is locked up? And I will say this, there is an unlock period for Solana. 
uh, for the, the initial token offering. There's that unlocking period for the founders we just talked about. And even there is a lockup period for when you stake your Solana. It's not that much. It's not like ETH 2.0 or Avalanche where you can decide between like uh, two weeks or a year in Avalanche. In this one, there's like a cool down period, a warm up period. And then once you unstake it, it's like two days. But there is, you know, when, when you stake those type of thing. But really, if you take a look at the staked value or how much is being staked, uh, Cardano total staked is almost 70% right now. But look at Solana. 75% is actually staked right now. Now, can these people uh, take this out and uh, in two days and dump everything? Sure, sure they can. But I'm gonna ask you a quick question. With everything that's been going on with Solana and the things that are gonna happen in Q4, we're gonna talk about this in a second. Would this be the best time for you to take things out of Solana and start to just dump on everybody? I mean, you did all the hard work over, I mean, if you were an initial investor back in the day, uh, a year or two years ago, do you want to just um, make a quick nickel or a slow dime? That's really what it comes down to. Do you want to just make a quick profit or do you believe in what's going on? Do you believe in the transactions per second? Do you believe in the team behind it? Do you believe in the technology and proof of history and all that stuff and go from there? Now, that's not for me to decide. This is not investment advice. This is just investment opinion. And, uh, People on my channel are pretty smart and I leave it up to you guys to figure out what is best for you. But in my opinion, just opinion, I don't think this is a great time to just start dumping uh, on the uh, different people out there. I think this is the time to really hold and move ourselves into quarter four. All right, so that's my little rant there. Let me know what you think about that in the uh, comment section. And then let's move on to our next piece. Oh, I just did that. Or I assume our last piece. Wow, we're moving fast today. Bitcoin and great news. So. Real quick, uh, there's a golden cross coming up, apparently supposed to be big and everybody's talking about it today. Uh, so I didn't really want to lead with that because everybody talks about it, but there was a good article here and I'll just go over this very quickly. So first of all, there was a death cross not too long ago, March, April, May, somewhere around there. And it was uh, uh, when the 50 day moving average fell underneath the 200 day moving average. And just remember that this is a lagging indicator. It's not going to predict the future all the time. And it even talks about here where it says, look, uh, James Butterfield uh, from CoinShare said, the indicator hasn't, has not been a consistent predictor of positive returns. So nobody, you know, tell yourself, we got to get it, we got to sell our kidneys and, and start buying Bitcoin because it's going to go up, you know, 10,000%. Hold on. However, I will say this, and this was a great part, a little refresher. That said, Bitcoin was changing hands at around $9,500 in May 2020. Remember that? Long time ago. The last time a golden cross appeared. Over the remainder of the year, the price tripled and then doubled again early this year before peaking. So this was a pretty good indicator that things were going to go up. And um, so if you believe in golden crosses, death cross, things like that, I mean, I see it as I see it as a potentially even a self-fulfilling prophecy or really just good TA. And people look at that and go, you know what? I think things are going to go up. It's going to look pretty good. And everybody's going to talk about it. Everybody's going to talk about it. And it gets in that consciousness of people and they go, you know what? I think it's going to be a pretty good buy. So around there, I think that September is going to be turbulent, even though it's been pretty good so far. But even plan B says we're going to hit 43K. Uh, that'll be the end of the month price. Eh, we'll see. Who knows? But if that's the case, good opportunity to pick up some more. I know I will be doing that. Now to go into depth about what we think is gonna happen in Q4. I'm gonna direct you over to Alex Maschioli's show. He's one of the eight different YouTubers I always recommend in the comment section or the uh, description. So it was uh, me, Alex, and uh, CJ from Market Rebellion, and he gave a great in-depth answer in the first six minutes of the show about what he thinks is gonna happen in Q4, how things are moving along, and he, and he goes over just the specs and the, and the, and the TA and uh, some fundamentals about what's going on. So I direct you over there to learn more. But uh, for today, that is it. So look, um, if you're stuck with me all the way to the end, first of all, thanks, I appreciate it. Uh, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, give it a like, and uh, consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is very time sensitive as you can definitely tell. And uh, but that is all. So thanks so much for watching, I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.